Hey guys, it's Coach Sam here, and in this video, we're going to be explaining what a proportional line follower is and how you're going to program it in EV3 classrooms. Now, if you have the Spike Prime version or the Robot Inventor version of this program, that's going to be fine as well. However, I'm going to be using EV3 classrooms to demonstrate how to make a line follower. So, what is a line follower? As the name suggests, if you have a black line with white lines on the side of them, you can follow that black and white line um, for as long as it goes. And that's what a line follower essentially is. So it's quite similar to a gyro straight in that it can follow something perfectly straight. So a gyro straight uses the zero angle as its purpose to go forward. However, we're now going to use the black and white lines as its purpose to go forward. So to explain the logic, it's quite similar to the gyro straight in that it uses proportional logic. I'm going to go over to the whiteboard to explain some of the pseudocode. And hopefully that's going to create a sense of understanding of how the line follower works. And then we're going to program it into EV3 classrooms. So definitely pay attention to the whiteboard because that's how you're going to understand and you're going to explain it to other people when it comes to robot design. So let's head over to the whiteboard and see what it looks like. Okay, so now I'm going to explain the pseudocode of the line follower. So what I've done, I've drawn a schematic or a diagram of our line. So essentially this red, that's just an imaginary boundary. And the reason why I've got an imaginary boundary is it's to represent that a line or a, on our FLO maps, we have a line. And this line is essentially a white line followed by a black line followed by another white line. Okay, and essentially what our robot's gonna do is if I draw a picture of our robot, which I'm going to do in orange, hopefully it comes out clear. Actually, I'll do it in green since it may come out a bit better. So our robot essentially, it doesn't follow the white and it doesn't follow the black. It actually follows the in-between of the black and the white. So if I draw this right here, Hopefully that's clear. And that green box right there, essentially, if it's hovering over between the black and the white, it's gonna be between some percentage. Now you would have learned in science that the reflection of a black line is zero. If you didn't know that, you know it now. And a reflection of a white line is going to be 100. So in between a black and the white, it's going to be 50. And this is basically going to be uh, this number plus this number divided by two or 100 over two. Now this is theoretically speaking. Realistically speaking, you're going to maybe have a reflection on your white line somewhere between 10 or even five to 10. And then your white line is going to be somewhere between 60 to 70. Now if you add these two numbers up, for example, let's just say we take 10 and 70, that's going to give us 80. Therefore, our reflection is going to be between the black and the white line, somewhere between 40. However, anywhere between 20 to 40 is actually going to work. So I've just written down a bunch of numbers. All you have to know is that the reflection between the black and the white line for a line follower in an FLO map is normally somewhere between 20 to 40. You can try this yourself. All you have to do is hover the color sensor over the black and the white, and you'll see that it's somewhere going to be 20 to 40. You may get a lower number like 15, that will work as well. So just punch that number into your reflection. Now, how does it actually work? Well, it uses something called proportional logic. Um, that's why this is called a proportional line follower. And essentially, if it goes in one direction, it's going to correct and go back into the other direction. So this black, it's a very high number. So if we plug in 40 there, if it goes hovers over the black, it's going to see something like 50 or 60. It's then going to do 40 minus that 60 number. And what's that gonna give is negative 20, and it's gonna move back in between the black and the white line. So just like our gyro straight, if we have a higher number, it's going to really oscillate between that right there. But if you have a lower number, I'm going to use my orange for this, or I'll use the green again. If we have a high number for our LFPK, it's going to be a fairly smooth LFPK. So just change your LFPK to what's good. And essentially it uses proportional logic to change its direction and it go back in the opposite direction. So hopefully that gives you a bit of understanding of how the line follower works. But now we're actually going to dig into the program. If you don't understand it, that's okay. It's more important that you can apply this. So understanding it, just ask questions, let me know and I'll get back to you for that. Okay, so now that we know what the line follower is and how it works, we're now going to program it into our EV3 Classroom software. So let's head over to the computer and I've got my home screen right here. I'm going to open up EV3 Classrooms as always. Only takes a couple of seconds. Alrighty, so now we're into EV3 Classrooms and I'm going to open up a new project and we're right here. So. As we said, it's quite similar to a gyro straight function, which means we're going to be using a lot of the same blocks. However, instead of using the gyro, which is this one right here, these few blocks right here, we're going to be using the light color, which is these blocks right here. 
light slash color sensors. So to begin, as always, we're going to set our motors to BNC because we want to be moving, right? We want to take information from the light sensor and then apply it to the wheels in such a way that it follows the light. So we need to now set our large motors as BNC in that it's our set our motors left one to B, right one to C. We're then going to want our hold position to stop. And to do that, quite simply, you just use this block right here. And that's set up for us. And now we can jump straight into the program. So I'm going to quickly make the program and then I'm going to explain what everything is. So we're first going to need a loop. So I'm going to pull out a repeat until loop. And just like the gyro straight, this is going to be running off the motor rotations of the wheels. So I'm going to calculate my degrees counted in A. But it's not actually A because I have my large motor in B, so I'm going to use B. Now, in reality, you can use either B or C because if you're going perfectly straight, then it's going to calculate the same number of angles. So it really doesn't matter which one you use. All this does is it calculates the angle. And to control how far we're going to go, we're going to use a operator. And we're going to use greater than for this case right here. So I'm going to plug it into here. So what repeat until motor B is greater than a certain number. So this just controls the distance and it's going to control the distance using an angle. So for my case, I'm going to put negative 1000, which isn't too far. So I've created a dummy black and white line, which is going to see what that actually is in the example when we see how it follows the line. Okay, so now that we've got that started, just like our gyro straight video, we're going to be using the move steering function. And this is this one right here. So just to explain what each of these components are, this is the steering power of the robot. So if you want to plug in a steering power so that it goes in a certain direction, you will change that number right there. And this is the speed. So I'm going to keep my speed quite low and I'll explain why soon. But now we're ready to plug in the line follower version and how it actually works. So to do this, we're going to go use our operators tab and I'm going to pull out a math block first. And now what I'm going to do is go back up to my sensors tab and I'm going to pull out my light sensor. So find the light sensor. If I can find it, it's right here. So we're going to be using reflected light intensity as I explained in the pseudo code. And we're going to be following the middle of the black and white line. So let me calculate the reflected light intensity using this block right here. And I'm going to plug that straight into here. And for me, the middle of my black and white line is about 25. So I've just hovered the robot over the black and the white, and it's come out to be around that number. In reality, this can change. So if you move a little bit toward the black, it will go lower, and a little bit more toward the white, it will go higher. But somewhere between 25 and 40, that's the ideal range for a line follower. So if you're there, you should be fine. However, your conditions may change. So I've seen line followers that work on 15 to 20. It just depends on the environment that you're in. And because I'm in a highly lit environment, that's why my number is fairly even between 25 to 40. So I'm going to use 25 right here. And my line follower is in port 3, so that's all good. And this is essentially a very simple line follower. Now, as we explained in the gyro straight video, proportional logic actually needs some sort of scaling factor. Because if you want to uh, control the rate of corrections or see how fast it does, you're going to need to change this LFPK or this line follower proportional constant. So let me show you how to put this into this program. So this will work just fine, but if you want to go faster or slower or change the rate of corrections, you now need to put in a multiplication block and plug this straight back in here. And now you can change your LFPK to whatever you want. So I'm going to put about two in mine. That's quite high for a line follower, especially for my robot, which is a medium to lightweight robot. It doesn't have a frame around it. Uh, and also it's only got one medium motor and one gyro sensor. So if it had another medium motor and another color sensor, it would be a lot heavier. So for the for my robot, it is going to be a little bit sharper. So you really want a smooth line follower. You don't want anything too jagged and too sharp because that's going to really change your end position. You really want something smooth and something that's not going to be too high or too low for a rate of correction. So try two, try one, find the balance between 1.5, 1.7. You can try different decimals and see what works for your robot. Another thing to remember is this speed right here. So if you put your speed higher, it's now going to look at your corrections and you're going, you may need a higher rate of corrections to match that higher speed. Whereas if your speed is lower, you may just need a lower rate of corrections to match that speed. So it's really just a process of iteration and finding the right two numbers for the job. So I'm going to show you what this program exactly looks like and let's see what it does.
So as you can see, that was a very simple line follower. Now the one thing you definitely cannot do is do a line follower on such a high speed. Because a high speed means that the line follower won't be able to pick up what exactly the middle of the line is. And it's going to become off track. So let me show you what happens if I increase this 15 to just 35, right? That's the negative 35 is a relatively slow speed, but let's see what happens if it actually works. So as you can see, it went off track and it did a good job at the start, but then toward the end at that massive uh, angle, it just went off. And this is because the speed was too high. So if you wanna make a really consistent um, line follower, Something between 10 and 15 is really good. You can really try four, uh, 20 if you want, but then you remember that's gonna change your LFPK. So these two numbers are now going to be variables. And that's not the only thing that's gonna be a variable. This reflection is gonna be a variable because if you're in different circumstances, then your reflection between the black and the white is gonna change. So if you're at your home base, then this may be a lower number. Whereas if you're in a highly lit environment like a competition, then this will be a high number. So this is also gonna be a variable. And your last thing that's gonna be a variable is this negative 1000, because your distance will change. Sometimes you may wanna line follow a little bit just to get to a mission model. Sometimes you may wanna line follow all around the map to come back home. So you're going to have four different things that are gonna change in this video. And that means that your line follower will have four different variables. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is it's very important to do this is to have a stop moving block at the end. Technically, you don't need this because it's already hold position. However, if you get to put this hold position, then you're going to need a stop moving block. So now I'm gonna insert my variables. So I'm gonna to go to variables and I'm going to make four variables. So my first one is going to be distance, like so. My next one is going to be my LFPK, which is my line following proportional constant. My next one is going to be my reflection. And this is just the reflection between the black and the white. You can just hover the sensor over the black and the white to find your actual reflection. So I've got a typo in there, let me just change that. And my last one is going to be my speed. So let's put that to speed. And now that I've got all my variables, I first have to set them up. So I set them up at the start of the program. You can do these before the set and set here, as long as all of your sets are before your actual program. So the program really starts here. These sets is just the setup to the program and you can really control all of your variables. So right now all of these read distance, so I have to change this one to LFPK. I have to change this one to reflection and I have to change this one to speed. So now I just have to plug in this distance into the correct spot, which is here, my LFPK into its correct spot, which is there, my reflection into its correct spot, which is there, and my speed into its correct spot, which is there. Alrighty, now I can just plug in my distances and I'm gonna do 1000 again because that's what I initially went. My LFPK, you can change that to whatever you want. It's a process of iteration, so definitely change it. Look at your environment, look at where your line is and how sharp it is, and then decide where your LFPK is gonna be. And if it doesn't work the first time, that's completely fine. Do it again, do it again, do it again, until you find that perfectly smooth LFPK value. So I'm gonna put 1.5 into here. Reflection, I'm gonna put 30. It doesn't matter. If I put 25, if I put 40, your line follower is still going to work there's a very big boundary that a line follow can work in, which is very good for our purposes, because that means when the environment changes, our line follow will still work. So that's very good. And now our speed, once again, unlike our reflection, our speed can't take a very big value. It only has somewhere between 10 to 25, maybe even 30 if you're pushing it, but you definitely don't wanna go over 40 or 50% on line follower. As you can see, it's just gonna go straight off course. So I'm gonna change this speed to 15%. <clears throat> Now you might be asking, wow, that's such a slow speed. In an FLO competition, I might not have that amount of time. And this is because your line follower, or the justification to this is because your line follower isn't your main driving straight program. Your main driving straight program should be the gyro straight because the gyro straight doesn't need a black or white line to work. So this speed here, it's so low because you're only going to be line following to get the positioning or the referencing to a mission model correct. You don't really need to traverse the whole map using a line follower if you don't need to. Hence why a slow speed for your LFPK isn't gonna be a major barrier because you now have a gyro straight that can help you go straight and you also have a line follower which can help you reference different positions on the map. So using your gyro straight and your line follower together is definitely gonna improve your arsenal and your programming range in your robot game. So that is the complete line follower program. As you can see, we've added variables so we can change these numbers which will automatically change these numbers. 
You might be asking, all right, well, unlike the Jaro Straight, why can't we go back using a line follower? And essentially, the reason is because the sensor for a line or light sensor needs to be first, and then your wheels need to be second. Because the sensor information needs to send this information to the EV3 and then apply it to the wheels. So you can imagine if it was reversed, right? So let's just say the robot is now driving in reverse going this way. This means the wheel is now going first and then it's getting information from the line follower right here afterwards. So if this happens, then it's not really going to be perfectly straight because the sensor needs to provide information to the wheels. If it's the other way around, then what you're going to be doing is essentially like reversing in the rear view mirror. It's going to be, you really can't see what's going on because you're looking backwards and you really can't see. You're moving before you're actually sensing your information. So this is why only your sensor at the front is going to work. Now, a quick solution to this is just placing another sensor at the back, which is why some people have three color sensors right at the front. However, if you want to line follow forwards and backwards, then you need a line follower a color sensor at the back. So it's just up to you. You probably only have three more ports left. So I've only got one gyro into here and one line follower or light color sensor into here. You have two more sensors that you can place. So most of the time, uh, FLL teams use three color sensors and a gyro sensor. However, this is completely up to you and your team. It's more about how you justify and use your sensors. So if you do choose to put three light sensors, then you have to choose the positioning very wisely. Uh, another thing that we found is that a color sensor in the middle of the robot is a lot more accurate than a color sensor on the side of the robot. Um, this is because the corrections are non-biased toward one side. Whereas this robot right here, it's the color sensor is right on the side, which means it provides the correction to this wheel better than it does to this wheel. So it's then going to veer a little bit in the direction of this wheel. Now, as you saw in our examples, this was very minimal, so it doesn't matter. So just to review what I just mentioned, the positioning of your color sensors are important, and you also need to keep in mind some of the future programs like line squaring, which needs two color sensors on the side. So we have a lot of things to discuss, but most of the time, you're going to have two color sensors on the side, one here, one here, and then you can put your third one at the front here, or if you want to have the capacity to move backwards and line follow, then you put another middle one right here. So all three can line follow. The two on the edge will be able to let you line square, and if you have it at the back, then you can line follow forwards and backwards. And that was completely the line follow in a nutshell. So as you can imagine, that wasn't that too difficult. Um, the thing is, this program right here is a lot more simple than the other program because we can only go straight. So the gyro straight had a forward and back, which is why it was a lot longer. So if you want to program a uh, forward and back, you're then going to need to do something where you have a loop where it's conditioned on the port. So if the port is in port two, for example, then you use the forward color sensor. If the port is in port three, that refers to your color sensor at the back and you will then go backwards. So you can change this and you've already learned if else statements and there's the example where we use a gyro straight. So all you need to do is fill in what that condition is um, and you should be able to line follow forwards and backwards if you have two color sensors, one at the front and one at the back. So that pretty much wraps up this video. This was a very basic line follower. You can have more complicated line followers like a PID line follower. That just stands for proportional integral derivative. So the integral and derivative parts we haven't covered in this video, We'll hopefully cover it in a future video. So the proportional line follower or a P line follower is what we've completed, but we just simplify it as a normal line follower. So that is this video and I'll hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.